I'm the Tax Geek, and here are more of your taxes oversimplified. In the last video on vacation homes, we covered the rules on determining personal use and rental use, and when vacation home rules for tax purposes would apply. To get the most out of the video you're watching, you should watch these videos first. A playlist of these videos will show up at the top of this screen or in the end screen. In this video, we're going to allocate expenses between personal and rental use. First of all, 100% of any direct expenses involved in renting the property are deducted from the rental income. Primary examples of direct expenses would be commissions or fees to rental agents, including online rental platforms such as Airbnb, and the expense of cleaning the unit between uses. All other expenses are indirect expenses, which are expenses that apply to both rental and personal use. Examples of this are utilities, mortgage interest and property taxes, insurance and repairs, and depreciation. Two methods are used to allocate these expenses. The most common method is the IRS method, which compares the days of rental use to the days of total use. For example, if the total indirect expenses of maintaining your vacation home are $15,000 and you rented the property for 125 days and used it personally for 16 days, you take the 125 days of rental use and divide it by the 141 days of total rental and personal use which would allow you to deduct 88.7% of your expenses from your total rental income or $13,305. The other method is called the tax court method, which compares the days of rental use to the total days of ownership of the property. Using the tax court method with the figures from the previous example, you would divide 125 rental use days by 365 ownership days if you own the property for the entire year. Using this method, you would deduct 34.2% of the expenses from rental income. The tax court method may only be used to compute deductions for mortgage interest, mortgage insurance, and property taxes. All other expenses must be apportioned using the IRS method. Since you are allowed to deduct interest and taxes on either a Schedule A or Schedule E, the tax court method allows you to shift expenses that you might be limited in deducting on a Schedule E to a Schedule A. It makes the most sense when A, expenses exceed rental income, and B, you would benefit by itemizing deductions. Let's take our prior example and split the expenses into $10,500 for interest and taxes and $4,500 for all other expenses. And let's say we collected $9,500 in rentals. Using the IRS method, we would only be able to deduct $9,500 on Schedule E plus an additional $1,186 on Schedule A, which consists of the interest and taxes we didn't allocate to the rental income. These deductions would total $10,686. The remaining $3,805 in rental expenses we couldn't deduct would be carried forward to a future year. Using the tax court method, 34.2% of the interest in taxes, or $3,591, plus 88.7% of the other expenses, or $3,991, would be deductible on the Schedule E, and the remaining $6,909 in interest in taxes would be deductible on Schedule A. And since the total expenses deducted on the Schedule E would be $7,582, which is less than the rental income, no expenses would need to be carried into a future year, which simplifies record keeping and eliminates any chance the expenses would be lost if the property were to be sold. The tax court method allows for $14,491 in deductions versus $10,686 in deductions using the IRS method. Since using the tax court method would result in net income on the rental property of $1,918, this would partially offset the additional deductions with the overall result of a reduction in taxable income of $1,897 using the tax court method over the IRS method. It is very important that you compute your allocation both ways in either the first or second year the property is in service to determine what's most beneficial in your specific situation. The reason for this is that the method you choose the second year the property is in service is the one you must stick with as long as the property is in rental service. You cannot change allocation methods after the second year the property is in service without permission from the IRS. Getting such permission is well beyond the scope of this video. So let's see how a vacation home is entered into a tax return. Jim and Janet own a cabin in the mountains in addition to their home nearer the city. 
During the year, they spent a total of 21 days at the cabin while on vacation, plus seven days there renovating it. When they're not using it, they either rent it out through an online service or let friends and family stay there at no charge. The rental service rented the cabin out for 85 days, and Jim and Janet let friends and family stay at the cabin for 14 days. Here is a list of all the expenses they incurred for the property. Let's look at Jim and Janet's Schedule E. The number of rental and personal use days are listed on line 2. They can allocate 70.8% of the expenses to rental income using the IRS method and 15.8% of the expenses using the tax court method. Since Jim and Janet used the tax court method the second year the property was in service, they will use that method this year. Jim and Janet enter their total rental income on line 3 of the schedule. They apply the tax court percentage to the mortgage, interest, and property taxes and enter those amounts on the appropriate lines on the schedule. The remaining amounts would be listed on their Schedule A as itemized deductions. Next, they list the direct expenses for the property on the Schedule E in full. This would be the commissions they paid plus the cleaning expenses. After that, they apply the IRS method percentage to all the other cash expenses and enter those on the appropriate lines. Finally, they figure the depreciation on the property, apply the IRS method percentage to the amount, and enter that amount on line 18. Since the depreciation taken is dependent on how the property is used and that use may change from year to year, it is very important to keep track of this depreciation since it will have to be recaptured when the property is sold. And as you can see, Jim and Janet's expenses exceed the rents they received on the property. The excess expenses are listed as a negative amount on line 19 of the Schedule E and can be carried forward and applied to a future year's rental income. And, as usual, this is a very oversimplified view of this process. For more details, check out the resource links in the video description. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Please share this video with anyone who would find it useful. Please direct any questions, comments, or suggestions to the comment space below, or email me at taxesoversimplified at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at TaxGeekUSA. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with more of your taxes oversimplified.